Amen. Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord on a beautiful Sunday morning. It's already warm. Pastor Hicks has a little glow. Okay, it's sweat already. And uh, I have the fans on and uh, Sister Maria is here and we're here and I don't know where everybody else is. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ken and Dolores are here, but... Uh, but it's time to have church, and I'm excited. I, I went to fellowship meeting yesterday, and Pastor Keckle preached a message. The song service was awesome. The food was phenomenal. But the word of God just stirred up a fire in my heart and re reminded me that we're all on the same team. Amen. That we need to be fighting together, not against each other. He used the body as an illustration. He says, the eye can't say I have no need of the feet. You know, we need every one of you. And, and I don't know where you are right now, but I do know that God is here and that he's waiting on you. Come on, let's have church. Let's stand in this morning and invite God in. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Lord. Grateful for your mercy. Grateful for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for the protection. God, how you took us safely all the way to uh, Arizona, oh God. Lord, you prepared a home for us in heaven. Yes, God, we know that you're going to help us get there. So, Lord, we're here this morning to worship and praise your holy name. Have your way in our hearts and minds. And, oh God, we be careful for sure to give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. And the people of God said, Save us. 
lost the dying world. Lord, when the darkness tries to prevail, let the light of Jesus, oh, the light of the Son of the Most High God, let it be reflected in my life. Let it be reflected in my speech. Let it be re reflected in everything that I do. That others might see it and begin to seek you yes. as their own personal Lord and Savior. And oh God, we'll be careful. Yes, God will be sure to give you the glory, to give you the honor and the praise. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can two people say amen? amen. All right, all right. Amen. amen. You may be seated. Hey, we, we, we sung at a few people. I don't know where everybody else is. I told them we weren't going to be here for Bible study. But we're here. All right, I see cards pulling up. Okay. Told you guys. Y'all had a pastor stand up and say, where is everybody? <laughs> What's going on? Did we turn the cameras on? Are the lights on out front? Because God is here. I, I, I want you to know that God is here. He's in this place. And you know what he said? But he was there. But folks didn't really know. They didn't, they didn't come expected. You know, I hope you came saying, God, I need something. I, I need something this morning. You know what? I need a touch from the master. I need, I, I got blessed yesterday. I, I'm going to tell you, I had a really good time. Sister Maria went with us. We drove down there to uh, 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 Glendale, Arizona. It was an awesome. We had an awesome trip. No problems. No, no flat tires. That was a lie. You know what? We had an awesome trip. We got there, they, they had a good accommodations. We were put up by uh, uh, Reverend and Sister no, Webster's. Webster's, the Webster's. They hooked us up, and so, I mean, we just, everything you could have asked for was laid out for us. Uh, the Glendale Church, they laid out a feast, feast for kings, and, and, and us just poultry people were there, and so. <laughs> but we, we really, had an awesome time. Amen. And then Pastor Keckle and Sister Keckle. Sister Keckle's testimony was uh, already getting us fired up. Yeah. She's testifying, and it was like we was at church. Let's do this. Because yeah. we're with the family of God. And, and then Pastor began to minister. And it ministered to my soul. I, I, it just really touched me in ways that I can't even explain. And I'm, and I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will help me to explain it to you during the message. But it really reminds us. We're in this together. Amen. I can't do this without you, without you, without I need all of us. Yes. But when I meet Pastor, I don't even do anything. Why not? Worship. Amen. Come on. I need you to be a part. I need you to worship God. I need you to get in and let God. God wants to touch somebody. Amen. He wants to use you, you, you to touch somebody. Yes. If only we surrender. So while we were there, Pastor preached, and, and the message, it stirred me up because it reminded me, we got a church, a job to do. That's right. And we need all hands on deck. Can I get a witness? Amen. We need everybody to say, hey, I want to be, I want to get in too. Because God's going to do something great. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Reverend Tissa is going to help us receive our Sunday morning offering and tithes. You give is giving unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. Now, I think about it. I've been talking about it. Have you been blessed during 2020? I know it's a horrible year, but have you been blessed? I'm not even going to look because I know you have. I'm raising my hand. I've been, I've been blessed. God took care of us. But it seems like folks have gotten scared off from the house of God. But I'm telling you, the devil's alive. This is where we need to be. The world is trying to open back up, but the house of God never shut. Take care of the house of God. Let me tell you, would you pray please? Yes, Heavenly Father, we just look to you now. Bless the gift and the giver, God. We ask that you meet every need, God. And we thank you, God, in advance of what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Did you hear Brother Ken? Time to give. That's the best time right there. Brother Ken shouted it out. Time to give to Jesus. Hello, Brother. How are you? Hi, Mom. <laughs> 
We had an awesome trip, you guys should tell it. It was fun. It was hot. It was hotter than this, too. It was hot. It was really hot. It was, it was dry, don't worry. It was hotter than here, hot. It was ridiculous hot. It was Phoenix hot. But it didn't have a hundred, so I, I don't know why I complained, but it was hot. <laughs> hotter than here. Amen. Thank you. Thank you online. Thank you, everybody who, who gives in the cash yet. Thank you, everybody who, who puts in your tithes and put in the envelope. Thank you, brother Ken and sister Dolores. You, you mail your offering. The house of God. God says, try me and see if I won't pour you out a blessing. He says, I, my only commandment is that you take care of the house of God, and I'll take care of you. Amen. You won't have any needs because you're being obedient to him. Amen? Come on, Sister Nix, I'm sorry. I'm just exploring a little bit. I've already started. Anybody else started to worship God already? Yes.
Anybody want to go? Hallelujah, Lord. Have your way, King Jesus. Even right now. Don't you know he wants to meet our needs? Can you give the Lord a clap off for him? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that all we have to do is call upon you, rest upon your promises, and know that your promises are true. Amen? Amen. Welcome. You guys did good. You know, I thought I was going to have to come find you. Mom told me you were home from college. I was like, well, where's my brother? I haven't seen him. She said, I tried to drag him out of bed last Sunday. You should have drug him out kicking and screaming. Brought him in here in his pajamas. I don't care. But you made it. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Brother Jim in the back. Brother Jim is cool. You just slide in. Nobody even knew. That's all. Welcome to the friendliest church in Albuquerque. Yes. You didn't know? Just ask. Sister Tensio is having class in the back. You guys, can you go with you? Yeah. 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 You have permission to go. You have permission. Man, I hope y'all bought y'all Bibles. Got this crazy long Bible. Bible reading. John chapter 3. Ch chapter 3, verse 19. It says, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. It says, and this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Now we we'll just close our Bible and go home. Right? Good service. Amen. Oh, no. But God's got something to say about yeah. this. This morning, with the help of the Lord, I'd like to preach to you on a message entitled Darkness or Light? Darkness or Light? Brother Jim, would you stand and pray for the message in the messenger this morning, please? Amen. Thank you, Brother God, for this day. Um, Praise the name of all the saints that you would give us your wisdom and your love and the faith that comes from understanding and the faith that comes from you calling us to your word. I just pray, Father God, that you would give each of us a clarity and give each of us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Darkness or light? A lot of people don't want their lives exposed to God's word. You know what I'm talking about? I, I was guilty. I was raised to go to church. I was raised to, to know who Jesus is. And, and I'm, I'm, glad, I'm grateful that my parents gave me something, a baseline. Your kids need a baseline. Like we, we've been talking about, uh, kids need to know the rules. If they don't have the rules, then anything goes, right? Can I get a witness? The same in our lives, adults. We're just big kids. We're God's children. And if God doesn't give us baselines, then anything goes. I can do what I want, what I want, how I want to, and to who I want. And that's how our world, I mean, the world has gone crazy. Me and Sister Tensio, we've been riding on the road a little bit. And if you know anything about past takes, we're not going to go long before a bathroom stop and maybe check out a burger place or two. I'm just saying, we might get but she said, you notice how fast food ain't fast anymore? All the lines are crazy long now. We can blame it on COVID. We can blame it on this, that, and the other. But it's like an attitude where people don't want to work anymore. What is that from? Well, we've been, we've been shut down for a year. We've been closed off from the world. And so it's not safe out there. And so... The restaurant industries and, and, and jobs and, and, and the, literally the infrastructure of our cities and the works are struggling to get employees to do the basic things. You go to McDonald's, you don't expect it to be a 35-minute experience. I'm talking about just to get your food. You expect to go in, grab it, and get out. But every 
everything is upside down because everybody is somehow entitled. Did you work? No. But the government's been sending me money and so keep the flow going. <coughs> well, it's going to run out. <coughs> the light is going to come on and somebody's going to have to pay the bill. Right? I'm telling you. Somebody's going to have to pay the bill. And you say, well, it ain't going to be me. I'm old. Let me get rid of that. JP, we don't have to pay it, all right? Uh, me and you, we're going to check out. Hey, somebody's going to pay. It ain't going to be me. But the bill is going to have to be paid. Here, the word of God was showing the world their sin. And they were afraid of it. Because they knew what would be revealed. And the worst part is, they, didn't want to, they don't want to change. They don't want to change. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I should have to go out there and take a minimum wage job if, if I can get unemployment and chill. I don't feel like I should have to go out there and hustle and, and, and do those things. But this is what made America what America is. Anybody remember? It took people working and sacrifice. We're dealing with Memorial Weekend. A holiday to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives in defense of this nation. What about the Son of God who gave his life for our soul? Yes. What about the one who laid it all down that you and I might be free? He's trying to show you the light. But a lot of people don't want people to see how they really live. How would you like it if you lived in a, a glass house? Every time you picked up your phone, phone it showed up on a, a mega screen somewhere, and everybody looked at it and said, oh, why is he on that website? Why is she looking at that? What is going, what is going on in her life? You see, Sin hangs around in the darkness. Deceit hangs around in the dark. You, you don't see uh, uh, people that are planning to rob a bank. You don't, you don't see them putting billboards up saying, Monday, I'm going to hit that bank over there on Lomas. They don't, they don't broadcast. Because they, they, they want to keep it quiet so they can get, it, get in and get out. And nobody knows. But the word of God begins to show it. Hey, sure up. Somebody's coming to take something. Don't you know the devil is coming to take your soul? He's coming to rob you of the victory that God has given you. See, the works of sin or the works of darkness, it just is always underlined. It's always uh, just below the surface trying to keep everybody down. Just, just, just. Uh, simmering over here and simmering over here and, and, and I'm telling you brothers and sisters, Sister Tensio and, and, and my wife were talking about it's getting ready to boil over we're living in the end times, think about it he says people are going to become more callous uh, children are going to disrespect parents and, and, and you know all that no, we're seeing all manner of evil even right now Amen. murder rates is up Theft, crime. What's going on? Because they turned away from the light of God. Y'all looking at me crazy, but you know what I'm saying, right? That's right, amen. I, I really want to make sure we make a connection here because I, I'm not just doing this because I'm bored. I, I want to share with you what God given me, and I want you to realize: look around you. What is going on? Everything's crazy, but God told us. Get ready. There's going to be a day when people won't listen to sound doctrine. There's going to be a day when they'll say, no, no, he's never come back. They've been talking about it for over 2,000 years. I ain't seen Jesus. I'm just going to do what I want. He says that's darkness. But the light has come, and we need to come to the light. He says in Ephesians 5 and 8, what we, ye, talking about you and I, were sometimes darkness. But now ye are in the Lord, ye are light in the Lord. 
Walk as children of light. As people who have the light of the Lord, we sing that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That just means I'm going to let the glory of the Lord shine in my life, shine in my walk, shine in my conversation. Our actions should reflect the transformation that Jesus has done in our life. See, when we were sinners, anybody was a proud sinner? You know, I'm gangster, what? You know, you, you, you walked around talking about the heinous crimes you did. Talking about how much weed you smoked or how much booze you drank or how many women you chased. Because you were proud of it. Well, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm not ashamed to say I prayed for you last night. I'm not ashamed to say I'm praying for you this morning that God will shine his light in your heart. Because God's been good to me. All right. I'm talking about darkness or light. Here in this chapter, we got the most powerful verse. One of the most powerful. All the, power, all the verses of God are powerful. But you think about it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You got to think about this chapter here. John is recording how Jesus was dealing with this so-called church leader. He said, you, you're supposed to be a, a man of God. You're supposed to be. And you don't know what I'm talking about when I say you must be born again? He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We need a new spirit. Can I? Come on, man. We need a new heart because our old heart becomes stony, become callous. We can't come all about. What do I want? I don't want to go to church. I'm picking on you, bro. I don't want to get out of bed. We're at church next week. <laughs> I, I'm glad you're here, praise God. But you know, sometimes the flesh wants to do what he says, but the flesh has to be bought in subjection. All right. We got to bring it under. We got to say, no, my spirit. You got a spirit in you. Some of us got a spirit we want to get out of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he's here to do to set us free from that. That spirit of complaining. That spirit of mumbling. Where did that come from? That's from the devil. But Jesus came to set us free. The master's word was here to show it to us. And he was trying to show this church man. This religious person. There are a lot of people that say, I know the scriptures. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten. I wear the t-shirt. I know it when I see it. John 3, 6, I can recite the whole thing. But do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you live it? See, so you have to understand. You, you must understand what Jesus was saying. He said, I'm going to lay down my life. He says, I'm going to be high and lifted up. Like the serpent. You remember, we were talking about it last week. How did Jesus say, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yes. He gave the example of the, 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 the a serpents biting the children of God. And I'm not going to rehash it, but I want you to understand all of this. God is trying to give this imagery that they would recognize. And I want you also to be able to to recognize the imagery. imagery. God so loved you. Don't, don't just say the world. God so loved me that he sent his son Jesus to come get me. I was lost out there in sin. 
Is anybody else out there? You were out there, you didn't know where you were. Maybe you're doing the Hans and Gretel thing, you know, leaving some great crumbs. We'll, we'll follow these back. I know mom told us to never go out here. I know dad said we, we shouldn't try drugs, we, we shouldn't try alcohol, but now we're out here, but we'll go back when we want to. But now we're lost. Now we don't see correctly. Now we, we don't know the way home. How am I going to get? And God sent Jesus to come and bring us back. Yes, bring us out of the darkness. Bring us out of that lost state of mind. To help us to realize that the Son of Man is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, who stepped out of heaven, who stepped out of glory for you. Yes. He came to save you. Amen. Woo, I, can, I get chills. Mm -hmm. I do because I think about it. Man, I was worthless. I'm still not worthy. Even after he saved me, I'm still not worthy. But he did. I'm still not worthy, but he loves me. And he's using me. And he's doing great things. It was a gift from God. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. But God loves you just that much. I said, wow. Pastor, what's going on? All I can tell you is, as Pastor was preaching yesterday, all kinds of things began to flood my mind. I thought about the prodigal sons, right? <laughs> we preached about that next Sunday. But has anybody talked about dad? Think about dad. Think about your parents right now. What they do to take care of you. What they've done, how they raised you, yes. how mom went through labor multiple hours to push out this six pound ham. I'm sorry. I just want you to get the image, you know? <laughs> guys, we know. It ain't coming up. No, no, that, I ain't doing it. I, I'm sorry. I'm glad she did it. Woo, that's too much. But mom did that for you. Dad, you know what I'm saying? Everything, all the sacrifice that our parents did for us that we might grow up. And then we rebel against them. This man was making a living. He was making a living for his family right here and right now and for their future. And his son rises up against him and says, Give me what's coming to me, I'm ready to go. You think dad was like, woohoo, yeah, son, go on out there, do what you want to do. You know dad was struck to his heart. Did you hear what I say? It hit him to his heart because his child, nobody wants their child. My mom cries every time he goes off to college. Bye, baby. Come back, call me. Praise time. Why? Because she loves you. She cares about you. This father didn't want to send his son out there. He knows the world wants to destroy him. He knew what was waiting to attack him. Darkness was ready to engulf him. And as pastor was preaching, I began to think about me. Okay, I'm going to be selfish. He was talking about me. Y'all missed it. it, he put it they, they put it on YouTube. If you can't get it out, I sent out links to it as well. I want to be the selfish one for a minute. See, I don't think a lot of times people realize that the pastor is praying for you. That the pastor loves you. That the pastor is sitting here saying, where are they? Prepare the house for them. We got chairs. We got chairs. We, we got lights. We got cameras. We all this stuff so that people can come to church and worship God. Where are they? Where are the children that God has given me? Where are the sheep that I'm supposed to shepherd over? And, and as Pastor was preaching, I'm telling you, my heart was smoked because I was like, God, don't they know how much I love them? Pastor, 
what's going on. I, I, I talk about lightness and dark, but this is what God was dealing with me about yesterday. And it was hard because I love you. I care about you. And then I said, where are you? Are you in darkness? Have you run away from the one who loves you? I know I'm not your dad. I don't even know if you're my pastor. I mean, that's like the church is all right, but now you're getting all personal and stuff. But I love you. I'm genuinely concerned about you, your health, your well-being, your spiritual life. Well, I know if, if I need somebody to help me move, I can call Pastor Hicks. Okay. I know if I'm in a bind, if I need somebody to pray for me, I call Pastor Hicks. Okay. Well, can Pastor Hicks call on you? Come on! Can mom call on you and say, Daughter, I'm having a rough day. Hold me up in prayer. Listen, this is your house. God put me here as the shepherd to watch over your house. But I feel like the prodigal dad is like, where are the children? He's sitting on the porch and he's just waiting. He's, oh, that looks like my boy out there. I know the world is trying to suck the life out of him. It's already sucked his joy out. It's already taken away his peace. Now they're sitting in a pig slot somewhere, moaning and complaining. I wish I could go back to Pastor Hicks Church. You can! Stop letting the devil see. It's the same God that delivered you who's here right now. Stop looking at Pastor Hicks. Look at Jesus. It's not Pastor Hicks. I'm a man, I'm subject to fail. The father, he realized, I can't keep this child. I gotta let him go, but I love them. I lay down my life for them. That's all I can do. I said, God, it, it hurts. God said, it hurt me, but I gave him my son. I said, but God, they just leave. They just, they just toss me aside like I'm, I'm nothing. Like all the tears, all the prayers, all the, all of my time just loving on them, ministering to them, caring about them. God, what's wrong? I'm telling you guys, sometimes it, it, it breaks your heart because people don't realize how precious that God so loved you that he gave his son. And it bothers me because we don't realize what God is doing right now in heaven on our behalf. Right now, he's moving heaven and earth to make an entrance for you. To come out of darkness. To come out of sin. He's putting everything in the right place because he loves you. And you're saying, go if I want now, but don't I don't. I don't like this, I don't like that. Give me what's coming to me and I'm out. I said, wow. See, it was God's gift. And God called me to be a pastor. And so I literally got my beating yesterday. Said, what are you sitting there crying about? So what? They took my son. Your children are going to wander off too. Pray for them. Yes. Keep praying. Don't let the devil steal what God has given you. I'm not preaching at y'all. I'm preaching at me right now. I'm sorry. I'm not howling at y'all. I'm yelling at me because God really helped me to realize you can't sit here and cry about oh, my babies are gone. My, my children, the children, the families. I'm thinking about so many families that are missing here this, this morning. What's going on? Has the darkness overtaken them? I think 
God, help us. Lord, don't let us be deceived. Don't allow the darkness to just settle in and everybody just gets used to it. You know, it, it just, it's just dim the lights. Party's over. We'll just, we'll just sit here and die. I'm not. I'm going to let the devil know I'm mad. And I want God's children back. I want them back in the house of God. I want the lights to come on. I want to shine and say, hey, that's wrong. Get it out of your life. Get that mess out of your heart. Get back to praying. Get back to reading the word of God. I want to be free. What's going on? Pastor, you got all upset. I did. Because it, you you don't, here we go. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He believeth not God hath made him a liar. Do you believe God to be a liar? Come on now. Because he believed not on the record that God said he gave his son. He gave his son for you and I. I'm talking about darkness of light. He said, now this is the condemnation. This is the reason why you're so miserable right now. Say, I'm not miserable. Then praise God, you're probably walking in the light. Hallelujah. Amen. But listen and let God minister. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It brings it out clearly. Not believing. Not taking God at his word. Not trusting what God has said. Actually means you're rejecting the truth. You're rejecting the light that God is trying to put in your heart. See, men love darkness for their works. I'm not just talking about that. One thing you try to sneak and do. But I'm talking about your behavior, your lifestyle, the way that you do things. You don't want God's light to be shown upon that because then the world will see the real you. They will see that, yes, yeah, he smiles, but oh, oh, he, 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 he's abusive to his wife. Oh, he smiles and, and he's friendly, but, but literally he, he's trying to take advantage of you some kind of way. She smiles and she bats her eyes at you, but she curses out her husband. Something's wrong in the heart. Yes. Yes. And you need the light of Jesus to shine yes. in there and clean it up. And then you can have the light of the Lord everywhere. It's not just my, my church face. Praise the Lord. Yes. God is good all the time. Sit down! Don't make that. I don't want to put on airs. I want to be right in my soul. Yes. Anybody want to be right? Anybody want the light to come in? He says, this is the condemnation because I'm here giving you the truth and you're rejecting me. You're pushing me away because you don't want your sin brought to the top. I'm saying you, you can say sin in general, but when you start talking about, you know, abusing your wife, I mean, sometimes you got to check them, right, brother? No. Well, the word of God says that I'm the head. But where is your head at? Are you thinking like God? Are you thinking like a hoodlum on the street? God said that you ought to love your wife like you love yourself. When was the last time you socked yourself in the face? When was the last time you slapped yourself or disrespected you? You don't do that. And don't call yourself a man if you can't respect and love your wife like God said. Wake up. It's real. The darkness will begin to come in. And before long, you're just like the world. And you don't know what happened. Because you've been rejecting the light. You've been rejecting the 
truth. You can say, I don't have to do that. I read my Bible last week. I went to church last Sunday. I forgot what God was doing. And God is trying to change you. Yes. He's trying to rearrange you. He's trying to let this light shine everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right in the devil's face. Yes. I'm going to let it shine. Yes. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. But what's going on in your life? I don't like this pastor. That's why ain't nobody come to church. You in there fussing. I'm not fussing. I'm tired. I'm lonely. Where are the children? Where's my family? What is going on? Are you going to let darkness swallow up the joy that you had in the Lord? You know what it felt like when you prayed and the presence of God began to overshadow your heart. You got up and was like, wow, he's real. Did God change? Or has your light gone out? Hmm. Because Jesus let us know we're going to be in the world, right? He said about being of good cheer. I'm not praying that God should take you out of the world, okay? You're going to be in the world. Sister Vanessa, I'm going to let you know right now. You're going to have tribulations. You didn't know that, did you? I know. You've been living in La La Land. Everything just goes your way. You wake up every morning, the birds chirping, roses. Alana, you, you throw rose petals every morning, right? Now. You get that red carpet treatment, the smell of bacon, you like, Oh, <laughs> that's your Sunday morning, right? <laughs> you probably went there tonight, but all right, cut it out. Who's cleaning up these pedals? Cut it out. <laughs> no. But you're going to have Sunday mornings that things are going to be hectic. Things are going to be, but God says, be a good cheer. Because I've overcome the world. Yes. All we have to do is just keep on serving him. All we have to do is keep our eyes on him. Let his light shine in us. I pray not that you should take it out of the world, but thou shalt keep them from evil. Listen, trials and tribulations are common. If you haven't done it already, we know tax day is coming. It's pain. If you haven't done it, you got a late fee coming too. But be in good cheer. Get a job and pay the taxes. Right? It doesn't have to swallow, you know. You don't have to uh, 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 run and, and move to Canada. You don't have to avoid it. Pay it and move on. Life keeps happening, brothers and sisters. Kids wander off. Kids come back. You wandered off. We've gone astray. Yet God was there with his arms outstretched, like that father said, my boy, that's my boy over there. And he ran with his open arms and says, oh, and his son had his feet. I don't want to hear that. Get some clothes. Get him some shoes. Get him a ring. My boy who was dead has come home. I'm, t- I'm ready to celebrate. See, when that wickedness comes in you, a lot of people think they can play with it like they, like they do with alcohol and drugs. They think they can play with a, a nasty attitude or a nasty disposition and they can control it. But here uh, in 1 John chapter 3, he said, not as Cain who was of that wicked one, he allowed the devil to get in there and sow that darkness in his heart. Well, I would never kill my brother. You don't know what you would do when you're given totally over to the darkness of this world. Well, I would never disrespect my mother. I've been trained better than that. I was raised by a black chivo. I already know. My mother, no, I would never do that. Get out of my face, old lady. Blankety blank. To your mother? Have you lost your mind? You know darkness has overtaken you when you've gone that far. 
He said, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Look at your life. What's going on? Are the lights on or is darkness? Really, what's going on in your life? He says, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's what it was. I knew it should have came to church this week. Come in here and you start talking about this stuff. I don't like this. Come in here now. We can just leave. Brother Fisco, he's not looking at me. I just need help. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. <laughs> That's what I was doing earlier. See, because I, I've noticed. You, you can blame it on coronavirus. You can notice on, on whatever you want. But I've noticed quite a few people become very lax in their faithfulness to God. Lax in their dedication. Lax in their concern about the things of God. And so they're just like, you know, uh, I'll go this week. We might go next week. I, I don't know. How do you feel like it? Well, okay, okay. Let's get pizza. Jesus or pizza? Pizza? Get me pepperoni. It hurts. He said, but when you love the truth, you see, I come, I came for some discipline. I came to be corrected. I came to be told, hey, you can't do that. Not and say that you're a child of, you can't live that way and say that I'm a Christian. Yeah, pastor, he's my pastor. But I curse you out. Something's wrong. You don't have the goods. You just got the words. Let the light shine in your heart. God wants to get past your facade. He wants to get past your front. I got my church face on. Praise the Good job, Pastor H. Good message. Amen. I needed that. But you leave unchanged. The darkness has not been pierced. It has not been penetrated. And God wants you to wake up and realize this darkness is going to swallow you whole. The universal law is he who committed evil hates the light. Drug dealers, when they pick a corner, they shoot out the street lights. If the police got cameras out there monitoring uh, uh, the civilian activities, they move on. Why? Because they don't want the good to see the bad that they're doing. Some of you say, well, I know that my wife looked at my phone. Why? It's my phone. It's personal. God says everything we do is over. Maybe your wife doesn't see it. Arthur, don't try to slide your phone away from you. I'm sorry. Trying to slide his phone to the other side of the chair. Because it's not Renee that you have to worry about. Renee probably doesn't even care. She, I don't care what he got on his phone. My wife said, and this was years ago, we, we, we knew Christian, we learned how to, to serve God. And she said, if he want to mess around, I can't stop him. It's going to be God. It's going to be the Holy Ghost. And if he wants to cheat on me, he's going to have to answer to God. And yesterday, I'm telling, oh man, brothers and sisters, I got my beating, but the whole time I was driving home, the whole time this, this verse was going back and back and forth in my mind. He said, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Touch not mine anointed 
He's talking about don't touch the children of God. And then he went to a special place talking about the prophets. Do his ministers no harm. Now think about the people. The people who said, I don't like Pat Six anymore, but I don't like his church, I don't like his teaching, I don't like this, I don't like that. And they run off. And my heart is broken. But God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And then I started weeping because I said, God, be merciful. God, be merciful because, Lord, they may say that they, they don't care about me anymore. They may say that they don't appreciate what I've done, but they don't realize, God. They don't realize it. So, Father, be merciful. They don't realize that they're messing with one of your prophets. God, be merciful to them. Let them see the light because, God, I wish no ill on anyone. I want them to come home, and I want them to feel welcome to come home. Yes. I want them to know the doors are always open. But why not, Pastor? They, they're talking bad about you. I want them to see Jesus. Amen. I want them to be saved. He said, listen, they commit this stuff. This is their lifestyle. But when we walk in the truth, we get a new lifestyle. Can I get a witness? We now long for the things of God. I'm not perfect, Vanessa. I'm going to let you know right now. Past days will fail. The word of God will never fail. Past days is all emotional and stuff. I did. I got beat up real good this weekend. I need it. I said, wake up. Don't let the devil steal my children. Don't let them come in and stir up and tear up this congregation. You got to fight for them. Yes, amen. Pastor Priest said yesterday, he said, this is the body. We shouldn't be fighting against them. We should be fighting for them. Yes. I don't have a fight with you. Yes. Well, I know I said some bad things, so you might know. I don't care. Come home. Amen. Let's get right. Let's pray at an altar and get up and get past it because the devil wants to see us separated. Amen. The devil wants to see us at odds. I don't like Arthur no more. <laughs> Why? I don't know. He got this job, man. He all uppity. Think he all that. So what are you going to do? Cut him off? I just ain't going to talk to him. He'll get the message. You know what I'm saying, Reverend? And Reverend Tessie, if you really like me, you couldn't talk to Arthur either. <laughs> Going around sowing discord. Yeah. Think about it. This is the house of God. Amen. Amen. I don't want to sow discord. If I got a problem with Brother Arthur, I need to talk to Brother Arthur, and I need to make it right. Amen. And if we can't, I need to shut my mouth and pray. Because anything less than that, I'm touching God's anointing. Oh, yeah. Do you want to be in that place? Mm. I'm going to take it a, a step deeper. Husbands. So, I go to church with my wife, make me go, whatever. I don't, I don't really understand it. But understand this part. That's your covering. Yes. That's your protection. Yes. Okay. Help husbands, let your wife know I'm your covering. I'm your protection. And then when you start realizing this, it gives you this cooperation. Begin to realize we gotta work this together. We need each other. I, I can't do this without you. And you can't do this without me. We can't build this church without each other. We're putting together a program. We're going to figure it out. But we, we want to fill the chairs. Remember we raised money to get chairs? Pretty chairs. I don't want to see chairs. I want to see people. Amen. Anybody else want to see people? Amen. I'm talking about darkness or light. What are we? Are we some cult we 
just, hey, us 20, we're going to meet in here. Yeah, oh, yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'll see y'all next week. Good meeting. Don't tell them about it. See, see if they had shake cookies. Just us. Just us. Everybody else going, hell. Just us going to the We had the secret. This ain't the secret. He said, tell him on the rooftop. Jesus is real. He loves you. He died for you. You don't have to live in darkness. He said that if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Do not the truth. Yes. Don't lie to yourself and don't lie to God. You can try lying to yourself, but you absolutely cannot lie to God. He says he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Closing with this. This is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Because of this, the crime fills up the measure of men's iniquity. The principal re reason for this speedy and final room. You think about it. Why is everything falling apart? You're not thinking about a few families. Good families. Families we haven't seen even before 2020. Families that were already on the fence. Their family church attendance was spotty. It was hit and miss. Yet God's hand was still upon them. God still blessed. They, they still had a job. They, they still had a home. But since things, since then, things are getting harder. The family's falling apart. Always struggling to make ends meet. There's no joy. There's no victory. There's no peace. What's going on? The darkness. The darkness has started to overtake the house. It's overtaking your mind. It's overtaking your life. God's on the second, second burner, third burner. He's, he's somewhere off simmering. Wow, hell is going on in your life. All manner of evil is attacking you from all this. What's going on? He said, men love darkness rather than light. The ignorance, the deceiver has told you this is what you really want. And you look at your daughter and you don't recognize her because she's come worldly. You look at your son and, and he's lost. And you're like, what happened? They weren't where they need to be. They weren't where they could be fed, where they could be nurtured, where they could be shown the truth. And, and you, and your side, inside of you, you know you're dying a little bit. You know things aren't the way they used to be. But God said it, it doesn't have to be that way. Matthew said, listen to this. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. Brothers and sisters, do you see the light? The light is still shining. The blood is still there. And it hasn't lost its power. The blood is still there. Pastor, I messed up. I, I said some things I regret. That's all right. The blood. He said, they sat in darkness, saw a great light. And to them, we sat in the region of the shadow of death. Light 
it sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. Turn around. I don't care if you've been walking in darkness. Turn around. Come to the light. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, God knows. And I'm thinking of so many people. I'm naming names because I missed it. I'm thinking about Doreen, Tony, Tony's sister. I'm thinking about Jamie. Jamie and her kids across the street. I'm thinking about her mom. I'm thinking about the family from Rio Rancho. I'm thinking about those who were faithful in every service. I'm thinking about Sister Mary. Now, Sister Mary, she, she and I have been talking. I, I, think, I miss her. I miss seeing her face. I'm missing Myra. I'm missing Valentina. I'm missing, I'm missing the Hansons. I'm missing, I'm miss, I'm just missing my family. I'm missing people that were important in my life. People that have raised me up. Where are you? It's praying time all over the church. Come on, the altars are open. The blood, sister, the blood, the blood, the blood. Come on, pray. I, I, I don't want you to sit in your seat. I want you to get bold. I want you to get mad. Get angry. I'm tired of this darkness. I'm tired of this doom and gloom. I want to break out. Get mad at the devil. I want to be free. I want to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He's here this morning. He's here. Don't miss out. Get mad. Get mad. Get angry. Come on, pray. Pray for somebody. If you know somebody else needs to come, grab their hand and walk them up. You walk up with them. Show up. I want to pray with you. Pray one with another. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for those who aren't even here. I know you need somebody to pray for. You've got someone to pray for. You know someone who's hurting even right now. I know. Hey, they're still wrong. They're still wrong. Come on. What do you, don't let the devil hold you back. <laughs> yes, Jesus. We need you, oh Lord. Let your light shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, stir us, oh God. Pierce our hearts. Let the light in, oh God. Pierce the darkness, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, penetrate. Lord, penetrate the darkness of our mind. Penetrate our fears, oh God, and help us. Help us to see the light of Jesus. Help us to realize his love, his mercy. Hallelujah.
have everlasting life. He said, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than, rather than light because their deeds were evil. God, I want this to be a, a earth shattering, a, a breakthrough day where men and women begin to realize I want out of this darkness. I don't want to stay this way. I don't want to stay cut off from the family of God. I want to come home. I want to be right between me and God. And listen, listen, make sure you get this clear. If you're serving God in another church, praise God, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about if you're not. If this is where God has called you, where are you? I miss you. I love you. If you're serving God faithful somewhere, praise God. Shout hallelujah. I'll see you in the rapture. But if you're not, don't perish. Don't let this condemnation come upon you. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you is our prayer. I love you, I love you, I love you. We'll be back tonight, 6.30. Come on, God's got something else for you. God bless you. Greet one another. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday night.